Hello friends and welcome to the channel. This is Stormhaven Gaming, I'm John and this is The Pale Beyond. Uh, picking up exactly where we left off. Um, unfortunately I discovered that you can't just save and if you come out of the game it takes you back to the start of the week. So I had to go through and do the um, captain's orders and the, the requests thing uh, again. Uh, I've done exactly the same. Uh, I followed exactly the same conversation threads that we went through in the episode. So we've just come out of the office and we're going to go and join the figure balancing on the mast. Upon closer inspection, you make out the ship's photographer, Kasia Belford, balanced on the ship's mast with her camera, lining up a photo. Uh, get down immediately or kill yourself. How's the view up there? Wait for her to finish. Um, this seems like a situation where she's going to fall off if we shout at her. So let's wait for her to finish. Snapping a shot, she clambers down, only noticing you on her landing. Oh, Officer Shaw. It's about time I met the first officer of this ship. Kasha, Kasha Belford. Uh, yes, I've heard of you already. Nice to meet you. You already seem to know my name, House. I'm the first officer. Of course she knows my name. Uh, nice to meet you, Kasha. Nice to meet you, Kasha. I suppose there was some sort of rule against what I was doing up there. Deepest apologies, but sometimes there's a shot you just cannot pass up. An accomplished photographer, Kasia Belford won the Fentler Prize, the highest honour in journalism, for her work covering plague outbreaks and riots in the capital. It came as a surprise to many that such a reputable journalist would take such an interest in this expedition. There was scarcely any chance of Hunt or the Benefactor turning her away. You expected someone of her accolades to be older, more experienced. This is likely her first time on the sea like this. Um, she's not prepared for it. Her proof is all we have. Her accomplishments surely outweigh her youth. Um, is that a little pompous? Um, her proof is all we have. Unless we devise a way to bring the Viscount back with us, her proof is all we have. Hmm. The cold game. Picture that as a header. Uh, what? Sounds fine to me, I like it. Let her continue. Uh, what? For the piece on this voyage, I'm trying to come up with a snappy name. Nobody will read it if the title sounds like the work of an amateur. Uh, this isn't a game. It sounds fine to me. I'm not the creative type. Um. Bit stuffy, but yeah, let's go with this isn't a game. An expedition like this isn't like business. Kasha nods eagerly, but you can tell she's not really listening. Oh right, of course. It is thrilling though, isn't it? Well, I suppose you've had your fill of thrills up till now. At least this thrill is within the law. Interesting. So she knows who I am. Uh, you have that right. I'm not adverse to thrills. Uh, you know who I am? She's a journalist. Of course she does. Uh, I thoroughly researched the crew of the Temperance. May seem somewhat excessive, but I feel it's necessary for a proper chronicling. That and plenty of pictures. Don't worry, Shaw. You don't have a reputation that sets you apart from the rest. Okay, so the rest of the crew are, are dodgy as well, are they? A celebrity like Kurt Darling's presence will dwarf any rumours that could form around you. Who's Kurt Darling? That reminds me, he'll be joining us at next port. Oh, okay. Uh, so, presumably one of the scouts? Uh, I should get his picture at some point. Kasha holds up her camera with a sense of pride before holding it up to her face. Stand still, sure. Um, please warn me, the captain sent me to copy a, uh, grab a copy of the manifest. How long do they take to develop? Uh, how long do they take to develop? Only a day or two. I've made a makeshift dark room in the hold. Speaking of photographs, she hands you an annotated document. Here it is, the crew manifest. Ah, hello, okay. So we've got, um, Timmy Runt Ward, Killian Smurf Sanders, Amelia Corvid Sparrow, and Joseph Joe Gren. Um, they're sailors, what are you? Your scouts, they're not on board yet, okay. Engineers, there are at least two I haven't met. Scientists, okay. Uh, specialists. Uh, Rufus Hunt, uh, Richard Templeton, Kasia Belford, 
and Robin Shaw with a nice, uh, some kind of smear across my face. Very nice. Uh, what else? Resource cards. We don't have any. Key items. Kasha's camera, integral to her report and the crew manifest. And Grimley's accordion, a weathered instrument tuned with care. Okay, thank you very much. It's a work in progress. The scout team has joined us at the next port, and the captain's forbidden me from the boiler room. If you could ask the others to get their portraits taken, I'd be very grateful. Don't want to leave anyone out. Uh, thank you, I'll see what I can do. Do something like that stunt on the mast again and you'll be removed of your camera. Oh, take the stick out your backside. Thank you, Kasha. She smiles. I'll not disturb you of your work any further, officer. I have a few more shots I want to get before the sun lowers anyhow. Safe shots, officer. Don't worry. You leave her to her work. Okay, so let's have a look. We've got someone on deck we can speak to there. Um, looks like we can go down below decks as well. I uh, wonder if we can go into the forecastle yet. Who are you? Have we met you yet? You spot a large man with a youthful gait, carrying a heavy crate over his shoulder with relative ease. Oh, your officer Shaw. He gives a bright, warming smile. Two Johns. That's what they call me. I'm sure you'll get your nickname later. Two Johns attempts to offer a handshake but loses control of the crate. He struggles before firmly holding it in place with both hands. Ah, maybe later. Work awaits. Okay, Two Johns. John John. Let's have a look. Where are you? You'll be a sailor, I assume. There you are. John, Two Johns, John. Excellent. Um... Can't talk to whoever's on the helm. Let's go below decks. I think I hear an accordion. Um, we've got... Oops. A flag, some bunting. We've got a chessboard. Uh, looks like a water skin or a wine skin, maybe. Um, is that a mouse trap there? Uh, some kegs, some crates, and several rooms that we can't go in. Okay, excellent. Mid-deck. Oh, people. Whoops. Okay, let's talk to, who are you, the cook or the accordionist? Uh, that must be Grimly, I think. So let's talk to the cook. Uh, you find yourself almost knocking over a man carrying a heavy pot. Careful, careful. You almost got drenched in broth. Uh, apologies, I'm in a rush on request for hunt. Uh, you're the ship's cook, are you not? You should be more careful. Um, you're the ship's cook. Indeed I am, and I've got a full plate on my hands, pardon the pun. You hear a roar from the other side of the door. Oi, what's holding you up? The cook shakes his head with a smile and chuckles slightly to himself. He grabs the large pot and prepares to make his way to the hungry crew before turning his head to you. If you don't mind, could you carry that tray of biscuits behind me? Um, yeah, why not? You grab the plate and follow the... I probably shouldn't have done. I'm the first mate. I probably shouldn't be carrying food around. Never mind. You grab the plate and follow the cook out the door and to the table where the crew are waiting with bated breath. Upon the cook's arrival, the sailors let out a rowdy cheer, the ship's cook placing the broth upon the table. Trust me, fellas, this one is worth the wait. The cook speaks with a tone of pride as he ladles the broth into the bowls of the crew. Bowls of the crew. Shouldn't be an apostrophe there. Sorry. Sorry, pedant. Oi, one at a time, you animals. Ward, you're awfully handsy for only one arm. Ward. Oh, Ward. We know the name Ward, don't we? Um, that's the father of the stowaway. So Ward only has one arm. Hmm. Interesting. Ah, piss off, Junior. Got some bread here too. Grab it fast before Tucker beats you to it. Okay, we have a Tucker on board as well. Uh, the, crew, the crew laugh and are merry as Junior guides you back through the kitchen. Uh, we weren't properly introduced. You seem popular. You're Junior. You're Junior? I take that to mean Hunt told you about me. Sent you to fetch me, did he? Did he not give you a description or were you just not paying attention to the cook? Um, we weren't properly introduced. Robin Shaw, right? I've been keeping track of all the new crew. Yoren Stokes, but nobody calls me that. 
You'll hear them all call me Junior. You should do the same. No idea why I hadn't picked someone he's never worked with as first mate, but you seem the helpful sort. Glad to have you aboard. Um, you seem popular. Well, you know what they say about the hand that feeds. Besides, half the crew I've known for years. You don't spend that much time on a ship with uh, folk without learning all about them. Okay, have you been travelling with Hunt Long? My brother and I are among Hunt's most tenured crew. Uh, I assume his brother is the accordionist. Uh, it's not often he'll hire outsiders, but I suppose this job is too big for just the usual suspects. Uh, why Junior? Simple nickname, my older brother is in the crew. Fair. Hence Junior. Yep, makes sense. Not very interesting, I know, but it is what it is. Um, is your brother around? Grimly. Aye, of course. I take that to mean Hunt is on the look for us. Don't you worry about it. I'll grab Grimly. Okay. Um, so what can we do? We can call the crew for dinner. I thought they just had dinner. Okay, well, we'll do that because it's outlined in yellow. The crew have their meal. It passes in relative silence. Oh, we switch through to the evening. The crew return to their posts. The hammocks are unfurled in preparation for the evening. Twilight falls. Okay. Oh, they're quite... Quite nice hammocks. Sort of semi-rigid frame to them. Um, oh, the dinner table. Who can we talk to? Over dinner. Okay. You overhear the newly picked up stowaway speaking with a one-armed man. So this is Ward and Ward's kid. But Dad... You're lucky Hunt didn't throw you overboard. Half a mind to do that myself. Come on, Dad. I'm here to help. Better know that involves work. Don't expect special treatment. I won't. You're an impossible child, Timmy. Okay, so it's Timmy. Okay, so we've added Doug to the manifest. Where are we? Doug Runts Da Ward. Good nickname. Solid nickname. Uh, okay, we can only go upstairs. Uh, oh, we have someone over here. Who are you? Mr. Gloss. You spot one of Templeton's science team pacing around the mid-deck, searching through some luggage that's been pulled from a cabin. Let me look in the light. Where was it now? He notices you. Ah, the officer Shaw, correct? Dwight Glossley. Apologies, I seem to have misplaced something while settling in the cabin. A bottle of wine, actually. Uh, can't be hard to miss, it will turn up eventually. You'd best not be drinking on the job. Perhaps one of the sailors took it. Let's let's not accuse the crew straight away. Um, best not be drinking on the job. First time I've met you, it's a bit harsh. Can't be hard to miss, it will turn up eventually. I would hope so. My wife and I bought a bottle to celebrate with. Okay, so Mrs. Gloss is on the ship as well, is she? To be saved for the journey back, of course. Well, if you find it, please let me know. Okay, Dwight. You are one of the science team. There we are. Dwight, Mr. Gloss, Glossley. You're a land-born scientist. Okay. Um, what's that? My cabin. Let's have a look at my cabin, shall we? Uh, it's all right. It's not the most spacious, but it's fine. Uh, that's just my journal. Right, let's go upstairs. What have we got? Ah, Mr. Templeton, we've got the ocean. Uh, let's have a look at the ocean first. As you look over the railing, out to the ocean, a wisp of smoke flies past your face. You turn to examine and spot a sailor with a pipe in his mouth and a sheet of paper in his hands overlooking the stirring waters. Smoking sailor. Looking at something. Uh, who are you? Not many sailors can read or write. What's the letter? Any spare tobacco? Um, ooh, uh, any spare tobacco? I don't share. Tashy. You're Robin Shaw, aren't you? Aye, I've heard of you. Don't worry. Won't tell anyone. Well, it seems like everybody knows Tashi. I wouldn't worry about it. Tashi falls silent and begins to read the letter, trying to draw, draw conversation from him, maybe similar to extracting teeth. Vern Sheridan. Okay. You are a sailor? 
Yes, you are. Vern Tashi Sheridan. Okay. But who knows about me? Templeton, what do you want? You spot Templeton, looking out into the sunset. As you approach, he turns to you and nods. Ah, Officer Shaw. It will be some time before we see a sunset such as this. I've forgotten his voice, so I'm just going to do another one. Uh, we see a sunset such as this again. The light distribution towards the southern pole is quite the change. Uh, sentimental, you weren't at dinner with the others. It will be quite some time before we return home. Um, sentimental? In a sense. Templeton keeps his focus on the reflection of the setting sun over the stirring waters of the ocean. There is great expectation upon us, officer. From who? Who is this benefactor of ours? Are you feeling the pressure, Mr. Templeton? Do you think Captain Hunt is up to the task? Who is this benefactor? I want to know. And that is not for you to know. Not yet. Templeton looks down, catching his reflection in the ocean surface. He looks back up at the sunset. Quite the sight, but I wouldn't linger upon it too long. We should retire for the evening. It's important the first officer be well rested. Okay, hold E to advance to the next week. I don't have any other choice. Okay, so we have... Hmm. Is this all the food and fuel we have? I thought we had six months worth. Or is this just for the week? Hmm. I don't know. Uh, well, let's, let's keep it on normal. We, do we need, what is it, three degrees? Uh, that will lower morale. Um, okay, well, let's keep it normal. The ship makes its last port at Orca Island. Cordell's sledding dogs are picked up. The scouting crew and Kurt Darling are picked up. Uh, the days are getting brighter as you move further south. So we should be heading towards the... Still heading towards the equator, presumably. Or are we now heading into the ice? Uh, it seems to have got colder. The day has got longer, so we are presumably now heading into the ice. Okay, two weeks on the temperance. There's a rap on the cabin door. Um, okay, come in. The door swings open to reveal Kurt Darling, all but filling its frame, grinning ear to ear. There you are, Officer Shaw. The ship's navigator is a difficult man to miss. Stature and reputation precede him. It should be precede. Sorry. Adorned with a stew of apparatus, this seemingly one-man expedition would be known to anyone following the heyday of exploration and the merchandising that followed. Ah, merchandising. Uh, I've no time for celebrities. It's an honour. I know little of the man. Um... Let's keep people on side. It's an honour, really. A wealth of invaluable experience in such hostile environments. I wonder he's not been swept up to some other post. Hiding away from the rest of us, are you? Uh, are you early this, uh, always this early to rise? Do you need something of me, Kurt? No, I'm simply busy. busy. Are you always this early to rise? These days I tend to enjoy a good lie-in, but not during an expedition. You know what they say of early birds and worms? Apologies for not stopping by sooner, Shaw. It took a while to set up my team, and a great deal of the crew were quite eager to meet me. Ah, uh, it's not often they work with a film star, is it? That's right, you're something of a celebrity, aren't you? Is that a brag? Is that a brag? Oh, not at all. I just find myself in these situations, it would seem. There aren't many who haven't seen my films, particularly in this line of work. More than one fellow on this crew said my work inspired them to explore the world. Quite the honour, is it not? Um, I'm certain you receive that praise often. This crew don't seem the film-going type. Is there a point to any of this grandstanding? Uh, I'm certain you receive that praise often. Not as often as you'd think. <clears throat> I suppose I did get distracted, didn't I? Anyway, I was hoping you'd join me up deck. Uh... 
Does Hunt require my presence? Of course, but why? I'm busy, Kurt. You should be too. Um, I'm presumably not that busy. Of course, but why? We finally ended the pack. I thought you'd want to see it for yourself. The pack ice. Oh, yeah, the pack is the ice, isn't it? Uh, pack ice, yes. Uh, I'll be right behind you. It can wait. I have work to do. We'll be moving through the ice for a while. I'm not interested. Now I'll be right behind you, Kurt. Kurt turns to walk away before turning back. Oh, and enjoy your morning. It's a good day, Shaw. Ha! He leaves. Yeah, Kurt's all right. Um, let's leave. What have we got? Uh, oh, the doctor's office. Uh, and we have someone else. Oh, we have Mrs. Gloss. Uh, you note one of the science team returning to their room. Ah, Mrs. Gloss. Did you have a good rest? She nods to you. Ah, hello. I did not expect many to be up this early. Harriet Glossley. Um, I believe I've met your husband. What has you up so early? Were you just above deck? Uh, what has you up so early? I find it difficult to adjust to sleep on a moving vessel. I believe the walk around the ship would help, uh, would help acclimate myself to the waves. Perhaps it will take some more time. Oh dear. Poor old Mrs. Gloss is a little bit queasy, is she? The science team aren't used to the sea. All the sailor folk. Quite the culture clash, isn't it? Well, I'm sure they'll grow used to them over time. Ha <laughs> ha! Okay. Uh, Harriet Glossley, you are now on the manifest. Harriet, Mrs. Gloss, Glossley. Okay. Uh, doctor's office. The door to the doctor's office remains locked. Seems the good doctor isn't in. Or perhaps enjoying his sleep. You are yet to come across the ship's doctor, even after all this time. Let's get up on deck. Uh, what have we got? The helm. Let, let's go and speak to the helm first. At the stern, you notice an older sailor at the helm. The old man takes in a deep breath in the cold air before letting out a satisfy, satisfied exhale. Exhalation. Morning. And a good morning to you. He eyes you up. Officer Shaw, right? Lefty. Call me that on account of... Well, it should be obvious. He chuckles. Don't worry about the bad sight. This is all feel. Just keeping her steady. He examines you. Surprised Hunt picked from outside for his first mate. Uh, I'm surprised as well. He seems the insular type. I assure you I'm more than qualified for the role. Would you prefer the role you seem to have the experience? Um, I'm surprised as well. He seems the insular type. He is. You must be somewhat special for Hunt to look outside the ranks. <laughs> I heard some rumours about what you were up to before. Honestly, that might be a boon in Hunt's eyes. Mornings like these are about the only peace I get from the younger lot. You should eat these moments when you can. Lefty returns his attention to the helm. As you get older, I suppose you learn the, to value the quiet moments, eh? Let us hope we're just as diligent when we're old and grey. Um, yeah, okay. Myself before you, of course. Of course. Harold Turner, Lefty. Uh, where are you? Oh, there you are. Harold Lefty Turner, a salt-born sailor. Um, so this is the, the pack we're moving through. Nice. That's going to get worse quite quickly, I imagine. Right, let's go and talk to Kurt. You join Kurt at the bow of the ship. You both feel temperance break the flows before you. Gripping the railing, he draws an enormous breath. The footing beneath rises as the ship mounts an impending ice flow. There is a moment's hesitation before a profound crack relieves the ship, cascading across the ice. He exhales. See? Nothing else like it. Uh, you weren't wrong. I assumed you'd seen everything. It's just ice, Kurt. Don't get too excited. Um, you weren't wrong. It's something, all right. Look at the ice. No two cracks are the same. Uh, all caused by us. Did you just want to show me the ice? For now, though, I need a navigator, not a poet. 
Uh, did you just want to show me the ice? Or is there something you want to discuss? We're about a week's sail from the last known vo location of the old Vice uh, Viscount. Assuming she isn't exactly where they left her, we can't take smooth sailing for granted. Same goes for this daylight. It won't remain this bright for so long once winter encroaches. Beautiful as the ice is, on this course, it's going to get thicker. He looks out across the white. We won't be so confident when the leads dry up and we're stuck here till the next cycle. We need to change course. Avoid the pack. Uh, have you informed Captain Hunt? It's not my decision. We have enough su supplies if it comes to that. Have you informed Captain Hunt? He won't listen to me. Thinks I've been dulled by retirement. I've probably seen more ice than he has whiskey. Hmm. Uh, it's not my decision. We have more... Uh, in we have enough supplies, or I'll hear no more of this. It's not my decision. Yes, but you have the captain's ear. Have you ever experienced the long night winter? It's not pleasant, to say the least. Uh, if it comes to that, we'll adapt. There's a chain of command. This isn't one of your adventure serials, Kurt. I can't say that I have. If it comes to that, we'll adapt. Ha! I can see why he hired you. You should understand, Robin. We're only as good as the unhappiest man. <laughs> Cheer up, then. First to make sure, I'll do what I can. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. Cheer up, then. Kurt smiles. I'll do what I can. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. Kurt nods and turns back to look across the ice. Okay, so now I suspect we are going to go and do our requests with the captain. Ah, sure. Ready for another day of work. Um, so we can bring up Kurt's advice. Um, yeah, I think we should. I think we should bring up Kurt's advice. If he thinks we should change course, he's probably not wrong. So let's bring that up. Uh, did you hear Kurt's advice? He wants us to switch course. I he had a few words to share. He may have been an expert in his time. But these days, Kurt is one with more money than sense. Anyway, back to work. Okay, so he's not going to listen to us then. Uh, I was hoping you'd help me work through a few more requests from the crew. You may have noticed the line pooling up outside. Everyone wants something, it seems. Call them in as you please. So Hammond, who I don't think we've met yet. He looks like an engineer. Uh, Kasher's the photographer. And Corvid, who is... One of the crew? I can't remember. Amelia Sparrow, that's her name. Uh, let's speak to Hammond first. A short, sour-faced man in engineer clothing approaches. I act in daft hunt. Not with intention. Not bloody surprised you didn't notice. Sure, this is our chief engineer, Clive Hammond. An opinionated one. What is it, Hammond? We've hit the ice and you haven't assigned any extra men down on boiler. You have your engineering team. We've only got six arms between us. I need more manpower in maintaining this. Sailors. Many of the crew have their own tasks they're busy with. I know I've already assigned Smurf on a matter. Okay, so we don't have Smurf available. The captain turns to you. How many do you think is fair? One? Three? More. Now open the crew manifest to choose how many sailors you wish to assign. Okay, so we can assign up to four to help out in engineering. Um, we don't have Smurf available, and we don't have Timmy available. Um, oh, there's Amelia Sparrow, there's Corvid. Um, you're ice savvy, let's not put you down there. Um, Ward only has one arm. Let's put... Tashi down there, and two Johns. There we go. Tashi and two Johns. You'll have to do with two, I'm afraid. The engineer holds his tongue. Fine. But you can tell me how right I was when we're buried under the ice. He leaves. A good spirit, that one, beneath the oil and the temper. You won't be seeing much of him, though. Prefers to burrow himself into the boiler room. 
Okay, so, um... Kasha and Corvid. What do you want, Corvid? Captain, word's got around about the stowaway we removed last week. We didn't remove them. They're on the crew. It has? Aye. And their thoughts? They aren't one bit happy. Least of all is that. He said it wasn't right to send the boy away. Did we send the boy away? I thought we brought the boy with us. I thought we brought the boy with us. Didn't we bring the boy with us? Up in arms, are they? No, they understand. Spares more food for the rest of us. Still not a wise move to upset my crew, is it? Sure, perhaps we could consider the crew's feelings next time. I thought I did. I can't remember now. I thought I brought him with us. He was down in the uh, hold speaking to his dad, wasn't he? Huh. All right. What do you want, Kasha? A thought occurred to me the other day while looking through the crew manifest. And, well, it might be too late for this now we've already entered the ice. Out with it. I thought it would be good to have individual photos of the full crew. For your report? Not only my report, it would be good reference for the manifest to put faces to the names. Much of this crew have served me for years, some decades. I have little problem putting faces to the names. Your thoughts, sure. Um, seems a good idea. If nothing else, it would make for a good souvenir. A waste of time. We should be bracing ourselves for the ice, not posing for pictures. It's a bit late, but it's now or never. May as well get it over with. Um, seems like a good idea. If nothing else, it would make for a good souvenir. Sentimental of this expedition, are you? Well, that increased our decorum. Okay, interesting. Some proper photographs will have some historical weight to it. Well, Belford, I see no problem there. I'll arrange for the pictures to be taken before the crew have their dinner. Thank you, Captain. Sure. In the meantime, I'll attempt to get as many individual crew photos as I can. You're still welcome to help on that matter, Officer Shaw. She departs, satisfied. Finish requests. Good to have all that settled, then. Perhaps we shouldn't rule out old Kurt so easily. If the man thinks there could be an alternate path through the ice, he's free to search for it. Shaw, meet with him when you have time. Changing course or not, we'll want one of his scouts set up in the crow's nest. Take care of that, then you'll be done for the day. Okay, so let's get out on deck. Um, there's Kurt. There's the rigging. Let's have a look at the rigging, shall we? While examining the rigging of the ship, your eyes notice a figure darting by, climbing on the ropes with ease. The figure lands on their feet before dusting themselves off. Their outfit denotes one of Kurt's scouting crew. Ah, no problems. She looks to you. And you are? Uh, Officer Shaw, yourself. I'm the first mate. You should address me as such. Uh, you should be careful. It's easy to get trapped up there. Uh, Officer Shaw, yourself. Flick, I'm one of K Kurt's crew. Don't worry about my safety. I know what I'm doing. Trust me. Kurt doesn't just hire anyone. Well, he didn't hire me for no reason. Got the medals in gymnastics if you're worried about my credentials. Okay. Flick jumps up and returns to scaling the rigging of the ship. Soren Killipper. And you are a scout. Uh, Ice Savvy Islander. Okay. Um, we need to assign... What are you? A sick young man. Uh, I did say we need to assign someone to the crow's nest, but I'm not sure how to do that. Oh dear, you're seasick, are you? You spot a youthful-looking man leaning over the side of the ship. His head slumped as he looks into the icy pool below. It appears he's been visited by a spot of seasickness. Um, nice glasses. Pat him on the back. Are you okay? Leave the man to his illness. Are you okay? You speak out and the sickly man doesn't answer. He raises his head and turns to spot you, his eyes widening in shock as he does. A bespectacled young man, shaking with unease. He stares at you for a brief moment, a look of shame plastered upon his face. S -s -s Sorry. Are you alright? I haven't seen you around. Who are you? Compose yourself, man. We should be able to handle the waves. Uh, are you alright? Um, yes. Well, not really. Uh, I'm very sorry. The man turns around and hurriedly runs in the opposite direction, avoiding your gaze. Arthur Nutley. I'm assuming you're on the science team, are you? No, you're not. Uh... 
Um, ah, specialists. Ah, there you are. Arthur Nutley, you're the doctor. Right. Okay, uh, we've got Clive Hammond, the lead engineer. Kurt uh, Jr. Okay. Right, let's go and talk to Kurt. Oh, Templeton's there as well. Send me up there, I'll get you a reading. The scientist eyes the man's cane and turns to you. I believe the navigator means you to send one of his scouts. The navigator clears his throat and taps his cane. Uh, of course. <clears throat> if you find one of mine, they can get us a reading, rightly. Ah, okay. Scout from the crow's nest. Well, we'll, we'll send Flick up into the uh, crow's nest. They send to the nest and take a reading with the sextant. All clear from up top. Oh, hello. We have a map. Uh, the last port you made where you picked up Kurt and the scouting team. Okay, so that's about a week's travel then, is it? Um, and that's Viscount Island. The last known location of the Viscount. Our destination. Okay. Yeah, we probably want to go around that, don't we? Um, probably that way. But I'm not a sailor. Anyway. Return. Now we can go down below deck. Uh, oh, I can overhear a conversation. Who's this between? I don't know. You overhear two of the newly arrived scouting crew talking. Ah, Quillsley. Have any trouble settling in? Not too bad. Can't wait for a chance to sleep, though. A proper navigator never rests until their work is done. Of course, of course. I take it you had no issue settling in? Not at all. The crew are a funny lot. Old Kurt certainly caught their attention. Huh. Do you think any of them would mistake Kurt and myself? I think you'd collapse from joy if they did. Ha! Huh. Perhaps. Okay, Yorick Moore and Hadrian Quill. Yorick, Yorick the Third Moore. And Hadrian Quillsley Quill. Okay, still can't go into any of the uh, rooms. Uh, I can approach the cook or I can speak to the accordionist. Let's talk to Grimley. I think his name's Grimley or Grimsley. He spots you and ceases in his playing. Need something. You're Grimley, aren't you? The man grunts. Aye. Grimley Stoke. I'm the ship's carpenter. Uh, then you're Junior's brother. Junior? Oh, you're sure. Junior mentioned you. Uh, in a positive or negative light? Ask him yourself. Won't keep you from your work. Don't keep me from my break. Ooh. Well, you're cheerful, aren't you? Um, who's the hooded sailor? You spot a suspicious-looking sailor emerge from the pantry. The hooded sailor spots you, keeping their hands firmly in their pockets. Not what it looks like, Officer Shaw. Plek, but call me gnomes. I'm not thieving anything. Uh, I will take you at your word. I hadn't considered that, but now. You best have a good explanation, then. Uh, I hadn't considered that, but now. You think I protest too much, then? No worries. I was just setting up a practical joke. Ah, okay. Um, best of luck with that, or what is it? Best of luck with that. Thank you. It's not at your expense, if that's your concern. Have to get some enjoyment around here, don't you think? With their mysterious trap set, the uh, gnomes scurries off to the upper decks to return to work. Skylar Pleck. Okay. So, setting up a practical joke in the pantry. Uh, and that's the pumps. Okay, that is indeed the pumps. Um, approach the cook. Hey, Shaw, can you grab some tins from the pantry? It's nearly time for dinner. Okay, I'm going to get hit with a practical joke, aren't I? The moment you enter the pantry, a bag of flour drops on your head, scattering all over your officer's uniform. The hell's was that? Gnomes! You wipe the flour off you before continuing. Yeah. 
You lift a crate of tins from the shelves. Is that it? Okay. The hoosh pot. Got anything for the hoosh? Ah, okay, so the resource cards are things like food. Okay, so let's pop them in there. And that increases our food allowance. Right. Okay. So, how many times can I do that? Just the once. Right. Call the crew for dinner. The crew have their meal. Darling. Ha! Shall we toast to the ice? Aye. The days get longer, but dinner. Dinner is fixed. It will see us through the long days and the darkest nights. The crew return to their posts. The hammocks are unfurled in preparation for the evening. You can't help but notice that it's still bright light outside. And we can overhear a conversation. An inebriated sailor on wobbling legs, leaning on the shoulder of another. Ah, good times, good times. Need to learn to handle your drink, Tucker. Oh, someone mentioned a Tucker, didn't they? Ah, but I'm fine. Me mates can carry me a eh, cavity. They can also drop you. Have two Johns carry you next time. Are you asleep? Shit. Okay, so who have we got? Tolson Tucker Higgs. And Rafe Cavity Doom. Okay. Nothing else to do there. Uh, nothing to do here. Up on there. Oh, I can go and overhear a conversation. Two engineers. Uh, <laughs> yeah, overhear one engineer speaking with another. Grips. Don't know how the chief could stay down there all evening. And Dick. Grips and Dick. Grips. Dick. Grips, Dick. You ever seen Mr. Hammond eat? I haven't. Maybe he doesn't even eat. Man's not human if he can work all day and night on that boiler. Probably doesn't sleep either. He probably sleeps. Aye, Dick, it's figurative. Right. Okay, Ricky Floggs and Gareth Forsetter. Um... Uh, that's just looking at the map. Let's go and talk to Ingrid Cordell. Lady Cordell. The dogs regard her with rapt attention as she paces between them, bowl in hand. The largest joins her side as you approach. Try some. Okay. Try the soup. You nearly burn your mouth on the hot broth. Uh, it's disgusting. Surprisingly tasty. Spit it out. Surprisingly tasty. It's surprisingly palatable. You feel yourself warming up. You seem to enjoy it. I'm afraid there is only so much. If you want more, it'll be among the dog's leftovers. Penguin, some blubber, fats and proteins. Fastest way to hydrate them. Was there something you needed? Uh, just inspecting the animals. Why are you here? Where did they come from? Why are you here? Oh, right to it then. She pets the dog by her side. I'm here for them. They belong here more than we do. Unlike us, they need the ice. It cools them through their paws as they run. They'd overheat otherwise. Ah, uh, you've been on the ice for some time. Strong creatures. Who's that beside you? This is Stanbury. Hello, Stanbury. Bark. Strong animal. Very. They handle stress differently. Adapt quickly. There's plenty to be learned from them. Um, you love these animals. They need me. And you'll need them. Pet Stan... Oh, I get to pet Stanbury. You ruffle its head. It tries to lick the broth from your fingers. No, oh, look at the puppies. Okay. Okay, I think that is going to be the end of this episode and the end of this week. So we'll be, I think, spinning on uh, to the start of next week at the start of next episode. So, well, we'll spin on now. Let's spin on now so we can actually, you know save things okay we don't have enough fuel by the looks of things no we don't so let's drop the fuel ration down we'll lose a bit of um, morale but everything else should be fine 
Uh, another week passes. The temperance has finally ended. The thick ice leads. The days grow ever brighter. But we will start next week. And we will end the episode there. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you're still enjoying it. I am. Uh, it, it's very much kind of... It still feels like it's building to, to, to start the actual game proper. So it's taking a little bit longer than expected to get through this section. But it's, it's interesting. We're learning about the crew. We're meeting the crew. Uh, we still need to go down into engineering. We haven't been down there yet. Um, but we haven't been allowed down there yet. So presumably we'll do that. Uh, next episode. So yeah, thanks very much for watching. Please do give us a like and a subscribe uh, if you've enjoyed it and you would like to see more. Um, please join us next time. Please give us comments down below. And until next time, I've been John. This has been The Pale Beyond. Please do take care of yourselves. Stay safe and bye-bye.